Good evening, uh, calculus students. This is Mr. Myring coming to you digitally, uh, talking to you about area between curves. We talked about that recently, but uh, today we're going to talk about what happens if you have to chop up your curves horizontally instead. So uh, we only looked at vertically so far, so we'll look at a couple different examples and uh, why horizontally is important for us to be able to do as well. So uh, the gist of what's going on here, um, you know, so this is a sort of example we've done so far. You have two functions that are being graphed. You have this um, area of this region that's between these two curves. You do all this stuff where you find the intersection points. Um, you have your A value and your B value still. You chop it up into different cross sections. And so um, I like to draw a sample rectangle in here because that reminds us what the greater curve is and what the lesser curve is. And so in this case, G of X would be the greater curve. F of X would be the lesser curve. And that's all fine and good. Uh, that's what we did yesterday, and you would integrate that integral, uh, that, that difference rather. Now, if, a if you have a curve that looks like this instead, there is a, there's an issue that occurs if we use the same reasoning that we used over here. Um, so, for example, if I were to draw in a sample rectangle which was vertical, you know, here's an example of what that sample rectangle would look like. That's why it's called the sample rectangle. You shade it in and say, all right, well, where exactly is this value and that value, because you still have the greater, which is the top part minus the lesser, but that's one, there's one x value there. Right? There's one x value, and that gives us two different y values, and that's no good, because you have, um, as I look at this, this top part and this bottom part is, is created by this same curve over here. So this is a bad sample rectangle because there is only one curve being used. Whereas if I were to draw in a horizontal cross-section, a horizontal one instead, this would be an example of what that sample rectangle would look like. And as you draw that in, as you shade it, now you can see that you have two curves. So this is good, as there are two curves being used. So therefore, we have two different uh, x values now instead. And so that's the big deal here is that this is going to be horizontally. So, so this rectangle is a horizontal rectangle. So instead of chopping it up vertically with vertical cross sections over here, we're going to chop this up horizontally. And therefore what happens is that this turns into a dy problem where this was a dx problem. So chopping it up with respect to x versus chopping it up with respect to y as you move up your y-axis, you have all sorts of different lengths of your sample rectangle. So that's how we're going to find area. So an example of where that would come into play. So if we look at uh, this question, find the area bound by the curves y equals negative x plus 3. That's going to be a straight line. And y squared equals 3x plus 9. So be careful with that because you have the y squared equals 3x plus 9. So as we take a look at this graph, and I'm not going to go through all the graphing steps. I'm assuming you can do that. You have these two curves. Here's your line, y equals negative x plus 3, a nice straight line. Here is your curve, y squared equals 3x plus 9. This is what we call a sleeping parabola. Now, if you have a difficult time graphing this sort of equation that's given to you uh, without, just by looking at it, you might need to change that into y equals form so you have both the positive square root of 3x plus 9, but you also have the negative square root of 3x plus 9. And so therefore, you know, at one particular x value, you have two different y values that we're getting out. So this is a relation, and that's sometimes where you will see us run into these issues of needing to do a dy problem. And so therefore, as I draw my sample rectangle in, we just talked about how it has to be horizontal, so this would be an example of what that sample rectangle would look like. And that is going to be horizontal. So, so if it's a horizontal problem, horizontal cross sections, um, all sorts of ways to say it, or you know, it's a dy problem right there on the very edge. That's a, it's a dy problem. Um, if that is the case, then there are several things that need to occur. First of all, is that everything must be in terms of y. You know, I, I say with respect to y, with respect to x, everything needs to be in terms of y. 
Now, what in terms of y means is that both your, your functions need to be in terms of y, and your limits of integration, so the limits of integration are in terms of y, and then, of course, uh, you're all, it's also going to be a dy problem. So as we look at this, then, we have to understand what this concept of greater minus lesser is. You know, that's a key phrase for us, greater minus lesser. This still holds true in this example. But as I look at the sample rectangle, the greater minus lesser is different. It's not going to be top and bottom anymore. What greater minus lesser is right minus left. So over here is where the greater is, and this is where my lesser is, right? So greater minus lesser is going to be a key point for us here too, but now it's just that it's horizontal. You know, the, I like to think of it as, you know, before if I was doing a vertical cross-section, the thing up top was greatest because it has the greatest y value. Well, now it's going to be the greatest x value. x values are over here, greater ones are over here, lesser ones are over there, so greater minus lesser. So as you set that up then, what does that actually mean for us as we do this problem? And what this in terms of y part means is that we need to solve for x. That's what's most important because in order for something to be in terms of y, y needs to be in the equation, not x. y needs to be in the equation, so we need to solve for x in instead. So what y equals negative x plus 3 becomes, as you, as you solve for x, you have y minus 3 equals negative x, or x equals 3 minus y. So that's going to be one equation that you use instead. And then over here, your y squared equals 3x plus 9. You do the same thing. Solve it for x. y squared minus 9 equals 3x, or x equals y squared minus 9 all over 3. So um, that's important for us as we rewrite those equations for this entire thing. With that said, you can then set up your integral. It's going to be a greater minus lesser, and it's going to be with respect to y. So you're going to have one function here minus another function, and it's got to be a dy problem because we're chopping it up horizontally. So all you need to do is figure out what curve is it that is your greater curve. I know this is horizontal, therefore greater is on the right, and this is the line that gives me the greater curve, so that would be uh, this equation over here, the x equals 3 minus y. Let's square this, so that's complete. So now you have the x equals 3 minus y, rather. x equals 3 minus y. So that is the greater curve. 3 minus y goes inside there, and then minus the lesser curve, that would clearly then be the sleeping parabola, um, that's all one curve now instead of being two separate things like this. If you need to graph on your calculator, you don't need that. You just have x equals y squared minus 9 all over 3. So y squared minus 9 all over 3. That's the setup. And then you got to finish off with your limits of integration. So the limits of integration have to be in terms of y so that it all matches up. Everything is in terms of y like it's supposed to be. And so as I look at that, then I need to find out what these intersection points are. Now these are, some of them are pretty easy to find. You know, this is a 0, 3. This one over here is negative 3, 0. That might just help you for your graphing. And then down here you have the point um, 9, negative 6. That's that intersection point. And this is unfortunately where a lot of students make mistakes because they forget to put it in terms of y. You know, but, I mean, they, they do everything else in terms of y, but they, they make a mistake on their limits of integration. Those must also be in terms of y, and so you use your y values. So as you're integrating, we don't go left to right anymore. Now we go bottom to top. So we're going to find out what this area is from bottom to top as we, you know, think of what our cross-sections would look like. These are all your different cross-sections, and you go from bottom to top. So therefore, the least y value is negative 6. The greatest y value is a positive 3. So then as you integrate that, you, just can, you can roll that with your calculator. You can do that by hand if you'd like. But um, you know, I'll just do it on the calculator here real quick. Uh, the, same, the same thing that we did before works now. So you can do your math 
nine to get your uh, equation for your integral. Now we're going to enter in negative six and a positive three. And here's where we enter our functions. So we're going to do three minus y, but you don't, in your calculator, your calculator, I mean, in this home screen, has no idea what x and y are. It's just a variable. So we can still use x. It's just easier than typing alpha y the entire time. So 3 minus x, that's the first function, minus your second function, which is y squared minus 9. So I'm going to put x squared minus 9. I know that sounds a little confusing, but to the calculator, again, it's just a variable. It doesn't matter. And then I'm going to divide that by 3. So I have x squared minus 9 divided by 3. And then instead of putting a dy, that's where we put the dx. Remember, I talked about how um, this variable here that you enter tells the calculator what variable you're integrating with respect to. And so, like I said, the x or y, it doesn't matter. You could put a z, a q, or a p here as long as all the other variables in this thing were all uh, the same variable, same thing as what you put there. So as you hit enter, you get 40.5. And so the area between these two curves is in 40.5. It's a horizontal cross-section uh, because of the way you were asked to chop it up. You knew that chopping it up here is not a good idea. Greater minus lesser still holds true. And you just have to set up your integral accordingly and use your calculator to evaluate. So hopefully that helped you uh, see a little bit of where the horizontal cross-sections come from and also how to apply that. Thank you.